You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. To the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. You're now listening to Sports Comas Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. And today we'll be covering the Pelicans 112 to 103 loss to the LA Clippers. The Clippers came to town and took it from the Pelicans about five nine points. Very interesting game. The very first game after DeMarcus Cousins' torn Achilles injury that put him on the, the basically on the bench for the rest of the season. The healing bench, that is. And we got an interesting story we're going to cover in that, but we'll do it later on. But first, I'd like to give you a round of applause for joining us on podcast 142. That's right, 142. So thank you for joining us in today's Pelican Post Game Report. And the rundown brought to you by the good folks at theposhlifestyle.com, www.theposhlifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Not just a website, but a, a lifestyle. You can check them out for water filters, organic supplement supplements. Uh, music, hair, organic soaps, organic toothpaste, organic shampoos, uh, all kind of great products available at theposhlifestyles.com. So check them out uh, when you get an opportunity. And with the coupon code, the Sports Coma, all lower caps, you can get 10% off on your final purchase. So check them out at theposhlifestyle.com. Not just a website, but a lifestyle. Run down the Pelicans. Of course, they lose 112 to 103 to the Clippers. We're going to cover that with stats, facts, and breakdowns, of course, as usual. We also have an interviews from Coach Al Gentry, his take on the game. Drew Holiday and Darius Miller will chime in as well to dis- discuss the topics of the game and what they thought about the loss to the Clippers. We'll also have some injury news uh, going into the DeMarcus Cousins injury situation. We'll cover that and give you an interesting take from Bleacher Reports Tom Haberstroff who put out an article uh, yesterday covering this injury and we'll give you a, it'll give you an interesting take on a DeMarcus Cousins uh, Achilles injury that sidelined him for the rest of the season and uh, you know we knew the Pelicans had enough this year if they remain healthy for the rest of the season for the very least make the playoffs but having Boogie Cousins and, and Anthony Davis together was obviously an opportunity to push past the first round, not just making the playoffs, but make a little noise when you get there. We'll cover that as well. We're also going to talk about the Pelicans' move going forward here, meaning there have been a number of uh, interesting articles and rumors spreading about from players from uh, the Moose, or Earl Monroe, I'm not uh, – uh, from Monroe to uh, uh, Michael Beasley. You know, I've heard articles and whatnot. We'll go over a few names that the Pelicans uh, could possibly use because I know they work in the phone lines right now trying to find some help for uh, Anthony Davis moving forward. This this definitely throws a wrench in the system and they got to make moves very fast before that trade deadline of February the 8th to make things happen. We'll get into that. And then we'll preview the Sacramento Kings on uh, the next game coming up against the Sacramento Kings on Tuesday night. Hopefully the Pelicans could uh, put something together here and attempt to uh, kind of salvage, uh, not salvage this season, but keep the momentum that those guys had worked so hard to ascertain these last eight contests. And that'll be the rundown right there. Now let's get jump right into it. The first topic dealing with the Marcus Cousins excuse me, not DeMarcus Cousins, but the L.A. Clippers win over the Pelicans. 112 to 103, of course. This was an interesting game to get down to the meat and potatoes of it because 
the Pelicans started off with high energy in the first uh, first quarter of the game. They won. They put up 34 points. <clears throat> the second quarter, of course, they put up 28 points. And they were looking really good in the first half going into overtime. They were looking real strong. Then all of a sudden, it just came apart, man. They became what they were prior to uh, taking control of that third quarter. They put up 15 third quarter points while allowing the Clippers to uh, put up 29 points. And then the Clippers just kept it going. Once they got, once they were able to establish their offense, Lou Williams, who was struggling most of the game, then caught fire in the second half, and then doubt, and then just put them together. Then it was obviously Blake Griffin, who was outstanding as well. He came alive as in, in the second half, and Lou Williams and Blake Griffin equals uh, against what the Pelicans were doing. It was a stretch, and I could not believe it. I had to look at the statistic on that in the third quarter where the Pelicans. Missed 20 consecutive three-point shots uh, during a, a certain time frame in the third quarter where they were just jacking up threes, man. And it it was – I mean, they just turned it off. And just, I just didn't understand why Gentry was allowing the team just to jack up three-pointers. points, three pointers. Like That was like, why you not get up off your butt and, and call a timeout, tell them to attack the paint, do something. Just don't let them jack up threes. And ultimately, what that did, it, the Clippers took advantage of that and started their runs. And that ultimately, they couldn't stop them at the end. They ended up taking the game 112 to 103. But before we get into most statistics, which I'm going to tell you about these horrible three point statistics the Pelicans put up against the Clippers, had they attacked the paint in that third quarter as opposed to jack up all those misguided three pointers, it would have been a different game. They could have powered through this difficult Clipper team. This Clipper team's not a sucker chump team. This is a very. Real team. I mean, early in the year when we looked at this team, a lot of people picked the Clippers to be in the playoffs as opposed to New Orleans being ranked tenth, two get two spots out of the playoff race. And the Clippers, led by Blake Griffin, and then they had a couple of injuries uh, to other key personnel, and some of those guys still trying to work their way back. But they got good enough guys, and Doc Rivers have those guys playing very, very feisty. They beat a few, a bunch of really good teams, Golden State, and they challenged a bunch of teams. Uh, that's better than the Pelicans. So they have able to. They were able to climb out the hole that they were, and get back over five hundred with the win against New Orleans. But before we get into more statistics, let's listen to what Coach Elvin Gentry had to say after the game. You know, we uh, uh, we didn't make start, we didn't make shots to start the quarter, and uh, we let it affect our aggressiveness defensively. And so we've got to we've got to get past that. Uh, I thought the first. Uh, you know, especially the first quarter, I thought we were real active defensively, and because of that, we were able to run out and get some easy baskets, and our ball movement was great. And then the third quarter, uh, you know, we missed some we missed some easy shots, but we have to go back and try to do the same thing that we did defensively in the first two quarters, and that's guard, be aggressive, and try to come up with stops. And uh, we weren't able to do that, and then uh, obviously we struggled the rest of the way to score. Coach, when those threes weren't going in the third, did you – did you hope or urge your team to go back toward the rim after, you know, I think it was 11 missed threes? Well, you know, I, th- I think we got to shoot the shots that's going to be available, and that's what we've done the, the whole year. Uh, and those are the shots that's very makeable. If we make them the next game, then we would be sitting here talking about, you know, the the, the open threes that we made. So, you know, it's, 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 it's the game of basketball. You know, we have those shots. Yeah, you have to step in and make them, and if you don't, uh, then you got at least uh, we got to get back and be able to the guard defensively. Were the looks any different without DeMarcus, or were they, were they mostly open that you guys had made? We got open shots. We, we we would take those shots again. You know, uh, the the problem that that we have is that they didn't go in, and so uh, to say you sh- we shouldn't take those shots, and now we're driving the ball in to traffic. You know, those are the shots that are available to us. You got to take. You know, if we don't take those shots and we drive the basketball, we're going to be driving it right into traffic. So uh, we've got to make those shots, and I think we're very capable of doing it. And, you know, it's one game without DeMarcus, so, uh, you know, it's a tell of two halves. You know, we've shown that we can get out and run and keep the pace of the game up and do some things, and then we shown that we, we struggle some when we don't have that inside presence that we can throw it to some. But... You know, I, I, we're, we're going to be fine. You know, we'll go back and look at the tape and we'll learn from it and uh, we'll move on to the next game and we'll have to, you know, obviously play better the second half than we did right here. What do you think that uh, maybe he needs to be a little bit more aggressive? Or do you think he was giving it up when the, the, 
they, they, yeah, you got to understand one thing. When you say more aggressive, you know, he's not going to play against two or three guys. That's what he. That's what. That's the challenge right now. We don't have Demarcus out there, so he has two, three guys on him, and all he's doing is he's doing he's making the right basketball play. You know, he shouldn't force the ball up there and take bad shots. You know, he he, he plays the guy. I think he ended up with eight assists or something like that, uh, six assists. You know that he. They're not going to allow him to go one on one because they know what kind of player that he is. So when they run another player after him, he, after, after him, he's got to be willing to make the right play, and that's what he is. He's a good basketball player that made the right plays, and if the shots go in, he probably would have had 12 assists. So we can't start trying to make him be this thing that he's not. He's not going to be a guy that's going to force shots and try to get up 25 shots or you know 30 shots. He's just going to play the game like he always has, and we're going to be okay. As a team, you know, we didn't make the shots the second half that we made in the first half, and and we struggled. We we struggled, you know, to score, but we have to, like I said, still pick up our defense and 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 guard like we did, and then we have to come up with some easy baskets. You know, get in transition and get easy baskets. Would you feel nervous playing him 40, 41 minutes, or do you feel like that's what you're going to have to do? Right now? Listen, guys, you know, if he's tired, he tells me. You know. I would like to play him 28 minutes, you know, but that's not that's not feasible to do if we want an opportunity to win. And so that's just the way it is, you know. I don't know what you guys, you know, if I don't play him 20, 41 minutes and we lose by 10, are you guys going to sit here and ask me why wasn't he in the game more? I mean, I don't understand it, you know. We're just we're a team that's trying to win games, and we got to play the guys that we think can help us win games. That is the bottom line, you know. I mean. That's it. I don't understand what else you want me to say or do. You know, I wish that we could play all of them less minutes. I wish we could play Drew less minutes. I'm sure Cleveland wished they could play LeBron less minutes. You know, he, he's, he's 50 years old and he's playing more minutes than anybody in the league, you know, except for one guy. And so you, you, you take your team and you look at the personnel that you have and you try to put the best personnel out there to win. And it's the same thing we did with DeMarcus. If there's any insinuation that we played DeMarcus too many minutes, then so be it. What do you think about some of the rotations we talked before the game about without Cousins? What do you think about it tonight? I thought, I thought it was fine. Omir came in and gave us some good minutes. And, uh, you know, we, we're a smaller team, obviously, when we moved Darius to four and, you know, Dante. But Dante played well for us and gave us some good minutes. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one game. That's so Coach L. Gentry, we'll as you can up. see. Yeah, he kind of controlled uh, being upset, but kind of didn't allow himself to kind of flare out. Had made made a lot of good points. And I think uh, the, the reporters asked some pretty good questions uh, to Coach L. Gentry about why uh, Anthony, about the, the jacking up of shots and the stuff like that. Coach Gentry's right. They're not going to make all those shots. But come on, man, let's keep it real. A lot of those shots they were taking when they had when they had those string of missed three pointers were bad shots. They were bad shots. Now he had a few open shots, but that's to be expected. I mean, the, uh, Darius Miller struggled horribly this game. He was one of six uh, from the field, one of six from downtown. Every shot he took was a three pointer. He was one of six finished for three points. He wasn't a help in this game. You had other guys that came in to play who usually knocked down shots. You had Jameer Nelson who was two of four from the field, one of two from the three-point line. He finished with five. These are bench guys. Ian Clark had 20 minutes. He was four of eight, one of three from downtown for nine minutes. DeAndre Liggins, who's really starting to get a little burned here, he had 16 minutes of play, two of three from the field, one of two from downtown. He had five points in the contest. And he right, Gold Gentry did obviously play Omir Asik for just seven minutes in the game, and he was only able to give him four points and three rebounds. And, and that's the thing. The guy's asking, are you playing Anthony Davis too much? I've been saying all season long that he's playing these guys way too many minutes. And the, the comment that he made in, during the interview about uh, about getting uh, comments thrown his way about playing DeMarcus Cousins too much is because of an, art, because of an article that Tom Haberstro of Bleacher Report writ, writ, had wrote about him yesterday. And I feel, you know, you can go and check it out. That fatigue likely contributed to Demarcus Cousins' injury, and we've been saying all season long. First of all, L. Gentry is under under pressure to win. He's under pressure from a under, from his boss, the general manager, who's under the pressure to win from higher ups and the owner 
on him to win these games. So what does he do? He has to lean on DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis by giving them heavy minutes. My problem with that is if you need to play them heavy minutes, that's fine. But don't walk around here with eight player rotations. If you got a team of 12 NBA players that you, uh, that your general manager gave you, why are you not playing these guys more? Why are Sheik Diallo not playing any minutes? Why is uh, Amir Isaac plays every three or four to five games when he's a veteran NBA center that makes $10 million a year? A lot of this stuff, you brought it on yourself. If you'd have just it gave some of these guys more time, we, we wouldn't be sitting here looking at uh, the fact that now you know you need to adjust your team midstream because of an injury more than likely due fatigue, to, to fatigue. But we'll cover more of that, more of this game, and more topics on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from Chief Bounds. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes so what are you waiting for head on over to the posh lifestyle.com that's the posh lifestyle life spell with a y l y f e style.com put in the sports coma for the 10 percent discount on your purchase it's a win-win so get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report with the PRO Media Network. We are recapping the New, the, uh, New Orleans Pelicans 112 to 103 loss to the Los Angeles Clippers in the Smoothie King Center on Sunday night. And uh, we just played Coach L. Gentry. As uh, people was asking about Anthony Davis's minutes, of course, L. Gentry probably had enough of that. But guess what? You you gonna get enough. You gonna get plenty of that, sir. Uh, looking at some of the statistics by Anthony Davis in this game and the box scores, Anthony Davis scored 25 points in this game. He had 17 rebounds and six assists in 41 minutes of action. And it was at one point in the game that Anthony Davis actually landed on the ground and stayed there for a while. And you could have, you could hear, hear the collective gasp of Pelican fans all across the nation when you just lost DeMarcus Cousins to an Achilles injury. And now, DeMar- and then Anthony Davis is laying on the ground after a slip, a uh, wet spot. He was driving to the basket against DeAndre Hop- uh, DeAndre Jordan and slipped on a wet spot and went down awkwardly. And <laughs> it just, oh man, it's too painful to even think about if you lose him at any point of this season. You have just Drew Holiday, who actually put put up decent numbers. He had 20 points, nine rebounds, and seven assists. So Drew Holiday was close to a triple-double with 37 minutes of action. And then there was Etwan Moore, 
one of four from downtown, 18 points. And those are the only three Pelicans in double figures against that Clipper club led by Blake Griffin's 27, 12 and seven assists. And of course, uh, yeah, guys like Lou Williams off the bench, 35 minutes, 9 of 22, 2 for 10 from downtown. He lit them up 22 points to help contribute to the win. Let's listen to what Pelican Drew Holiday has to say about the loss to the Clippers. Here's Drew. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think we played well this game. Um, I think we kind of got burnt out there for a little bit, but the Marcus does a lot for us. Uh, rebounding, passing, uh, pushing the pace. So uh, it might, but... Still think that we could have won this game. What do you? T- I mean, what do you take away most? I mean, the first half, you guys offensively, especially, have a really good half, and third quarter happens the way it does. But I mean, how do you how do you dissect this game and, and take away from it to be able to move forward? Well, I think the third quarters were like that, even with the markets. Um, I think we got good shots, but especially today, we got a lot of good wide open shots, the ones that we want. But uh, I think they're all short. That's why I think our legs were were. I'm a little sluggish, but I mean, really, we just got to go back and watch them, see what happens. Uh, with the three pointers in particular, you think it's just a matter of getting good shots and they weren't falling? Or what, what do you think? Yeah, I think we got a lot of wide open shots. And I mean, I think a lot of them missed short, some missed long. Um, I think AD missed a lot in the beginning, even around the basket. So, uh, yeah. How do you view what you have to do offensively? Um, is it, is, it, is it a different role for you now, knowing you have to cover some of that, those points that DeMarcus had, or does it just you just want to continue to play the game that you've been playing the last couple just of years? Just continue to play. Um, uh, again, I, I trust my teammates, and they pick up the slack. Uh, obviously, we, again, we got a lot of good shots uh, in transition, and especially in the first half, and a lot in the second half, but, but just missed. But <clears throat> just to be able to... Uh, playing my game and stay consistent. Um, I, I got to rebound. I got to rebound a lot more, and I think I did that tonight. Mentally, this game. I'm sorry. Just, I was saying, what's, what's kind of been the problem thing in the third quarter? Not just this game. I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, I think a lot of times we get a lot of good shots, but they're jump shots. Uh, for the most part, we need to start attacking the basket, kind of like we do in the beginning of the game. But um, yeah, I, I feel like sometimes teams give us their jump shot, and we take it, and, and we might miss it, and. And from there, they come down and hit. So, did it feel like more of the defensive attention was kind of shifted over to you and AD with the markers going? Is that something you guys have to adjust to now for the rest of the season? Um, again, I, I think it's a it's a full team thing. Uh, again, a lot of the slack is going to be taken up from from other guys like Darius and and Dante and and DeAndre. So, uh, again, I, I feel like I played me and AD played defense the way we always have since we've been together. Um, try to be intense on the ball. Uh, try to make it difficult to people for people to uh, to shoot threes or at the basket. So. Not at all based on the play today, but do you feel like emotionally and mentally this team has gotten over losing to Marcus and, and they feel like they're in the right mindset moving forward? I think we came ready to play. I think we gave ourselves a chance to win. It looked like you know they tried to take AD out of the game. Um, obviously, that's what people are going to do now, especially with them out without having DeMarcus. Are, you, are there going to be adjustments maybe that you see already to create more easy opportunities for him at the basket or more post-up opportunities? Again, I think he had a lot of them today, uh, even with DeAndre. Uh, I think they just went one-on-one, and, and that's how they defended him. And uh, he just missed some, some bunnies. Uh, his mid-range game is impeccable. I just think he missed a couple of them tonight. But uh, Eddie will figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. I don't really think they doubled him really like that for us to adjust yet. What do you think of that second unit, like you guys are able to play well together considering you guys are together at all. Oh, yeah. Guys playing hard, uh, playing for each other, and, and just moving the ball, trying to push the pace. Uh, again, we played really well in the second half, and we got to be able to carry that over. That's um, Drew Holiday giving his commentary on the game, saying that we came out ready to play. Coach L. Gentry said it was a tale of two halves, like a uh, tale of two cities or something. But listen, let me tell you something. Anybody that watches the game of ball, especially pro ball, knows that the Pelicans were really jacking up way too many shots during that third period as opposed to attacking a basket. I went back and looked at the film. They had opportunities to attack the pink. I think they gave a guy like DeAndre Jordan way too much credit. Anthony Davis, at one point, they had DeAndre Jordan way out at the three-point line. Now, he's one of maybe three or four bigs that can actually guard multiple players. 
Uh, he's a he's he's a big guy, about seven seven footer, who has the ability to move laterally to stay with most players. They were able to draw him away from the basket when Anthony Davis was at the top of the at the near the three point line, maybe 18, 19 feet away from the basket. DeAndre Jordan would come out and meet him. So they had opportunities to drive the paint. They really weren't any other. Well, you look at Blake Griffin, who's mostly a defensive stopper, who has who has the ability to roam. So they have two really mobile, big guys that can cover a lot of ground. But to, it, from what I've seen, they had opportunities. And they'll go back and look at the, the tape and say the same thing. We had opportunities to attack the paint, to get to the, to the, to the, to the cup many times. Looking at some of the, the statistics from the breakdown dealing with the Pelicans, they finished the game shooting 45%. They were horrible, 9 of 35 from the downtown jacking the ball up for a miserable 26%. 18 of 25 from the free throw line for 72%. They finished the, the game with 56 rebounds, 23 assists, and of course they turned the ball over 15 times for 13 points, but also the Clippers had 12 turnovers for 13 points as well. And you look at the fast break points, the Pelicans actually did way better, 20 to 8, and then but they were all rebounded. I mean, uh, the, they lost the paint war, 52 to 46 to the Clippers in that matchup. So, I know that you look at a lot of stuff, you deal with this team, you face this team, like a team like the Clippers, who are a very feisty team. The Pelicans really had this game. One thing they had to do was kind of step on these guys in the second half by attacking the basket. They did not. Would Drew Holiday say that a lot of the other guys will have to step up? They'll have to step up. I don't know what you're going to get from a guy like Dante Cunningham, to be honest with you. Some games, I mean, I see him missing – underneath uh, you know he get uh, under just reverse layups easy dunks I just don't know about Dante Cunningham I, I just think it's a bad idea to to come out and play him at the four position and then move Anthony Davis to the five position we know what happens with Davis plays at the five but he feels like that's the best lineup the small ball lineup to give him an opportunity to win Amir Asik doesn't play that much I mean, he plays every three or four games. He make $10 million. I've been beating this horse. I've been beating this. What's the problem with Sheck Diallo? I mean, why isn't – I mean, this he doesn't get any – he just sits on the bench. I mean, I think Sheck Diallo is a young forward that can come in and help you. I think he can give – he's a high-energy guy. He can come in and get rebounds offensively. He got a pretty decent offensive game. I just don't understand why he's not used in any capacity whatsoever. How about letting Mike James get an opportunity to play before his 10-day contract runs out? Let's see what the guy can do. We've seen him at Phoenix. We knew how spectacular and explosive he is at Phoenix. Maybe you need to start incorporating that guy into the system because you sign these guys and you just let them sit all the time. And I just don't get it with Sheik Diallo. He's been there for two years, and he mean to tell me he doesn't earn at least five minutes of play? Then you're forced to play Amir Asik for a great seven minutes of play. Seven minutes, for real. Let's see what these guys could do, man. Let's see what these guys can do. Amir Asik, the least you could do is let's get him in there. Let's try a lineup where you play him and see what he does for you. Let's see if you give him 20 minutes, what goes on and, and build him up. If we would have played him regularly, we could have had something. We could maybe have gotten him into some type of rhythm, got his confidence back up perhaps. But it just it's taking too long. You have to utilize the guys that you have. He did run a 5-10-player uh, rotation this week because of the uh, injuries to DeMarcus Cousins. But I just don't think – uh, that if you you these bench guys got to step up, the bench uh, lost to, against the Clippers today, thirty four to twenty six. You know the bench is going to have to win some games to work as a unit to kind of reproduce some of those numbers that Marcus Cousins has. And if they don't, you're gonna be you're gonna be lay, you're laying a lot of pressure on Anthony Davis, and that ultimately will lead to disaster for the team if he goes down. Then you have no choice. You got Drew Holiday to tar- carry the team. And Etwan Moore and the and Rajon Rondo, and you're gonna be in a, 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 a desperate situation. In but we know uh, Dale Demps is working the waiver wire, trying to see if he could find somebody to kind of help this team out. Boy, what a what a what a situation they have. But anyway, the Pelicans lose this game 112 to 103 to the the Clippers, and now they they are facing oh man. A uh, very peculiar situation. Let's move on for that and go into a couple of stories that we're going to cover other topics. A story written by Tom Haberstraw of Bleacher Report. 
is titled, and you can feel free to go Google that, is Fatigue Likely Contributed to DeMarcus Cousins' Achilles Injury. And he has a very lengthy article where he talks about what happened, the devastating injury that occurred to DeMarcus Cousins. And he, he introduces a study that was done back in 25 and back in uh, 2015 by a doctor, uh, Jeff Stotts of In Street Clothes. Uh, dot com, a site specializing in sports injuries. And I'm gonna read you some of the article because it's very, it's very interesting. It's food for thought. 64 percent of all in-game ruptures in the NBA since 2005 happened in the second half of the game. That finding allows this report. Fatigue of overuse contributes to Achilles tendonitis and ruptures, according to the Cleveland Clinic and other studies. Cousins was coming off the best stretch of his career by his minutes total indicate it would also perhaps the most taxing on Monday's phenomenal 44.23 rebound 10 assist performance and double overtime win over Chicago the the 611 270 pound center played a career high 52 minutes no player on either team played more than 47 minutes Cousins tied for the highest total that any player has clocked in a game this season along with of course Russell Westbrook and Ben Simmons Cousins was clearly gassed after the game you know he made the commentary about getting into the fight with his strength coach because his strength coach asked him if he wanted to uh, lift. <laughs> Remember that? Well, anyway, it said the maritime, the marathon outing may have been particularly grueling because he had been pushing his body into uncharted territory. Heading into that game, Cousins had been averaging a whopping 40 minutes per game in his previous 10 contests. He played in four overtimes in a nine-day span. In summary, January was Cousins' most taxing month of the career in months with at least five games played, he registered career highs, 40, I mean, 38 minutes per game. Friday's game was Cousins' fourth in seven days. Of course, through the annals of NBA history, plenty of centers like Cousins' enormous size has averaged 40 minutes per game. If they could take it, why can't today's big men? Goes into that. And it basically tells you, breaking it down, gives a really good account of uh, what the article says about the overuse. This guy, Tom Haberstraw, does have a point. He does have a point. He laid it out, even put the medical statistics uh, to it, dealing with ruptured tendons. DeMarcus Cousins has been playing ridiculous amount of minutes, which goes to show that many nights, if you look at the rotation, the rotations only went eight players. Well, they used three players off the bench or four players off the bench. And more than likely, he always used guards to take guards out because he rotates guards no matter what size they are. You have guys like Jameer Nelson to come in, Ian Clark that'll come in. He'll rotate the guards. But if you know about the bigs, you'll bring Dante Cunningham off the bench. Very rarely did he use Sheik Diallo. Very rarely did he use Amir Asik. The bigs that back up the bigs. If who's, who's Anthony Davis back up big? Coming off the bench would be Dante Cunningham, who's not really a big. He's more like a small 40, 6'8". You have Sheik Diallo, who's 6'9", who doesn't play at all. Then you have a 7-footer who is a veteran who's played in starter minutes in the league for Chicago and Houston who can play. Now that he's not an all-star, but he can contribute for the team that doesn't play any minutes, and he played seven minutes last night only because he was forced to, but seven funky minutes for this guy, and you just lost your other guy for the season. Stupid, man. So the, the the point is, that's what L. Gentry was kind of giving that little jab at during the interview about, well, so be it if they're going to say that uh, his injury was contributed to uh, overplaying. Yeah, he overplaying his bigs because he's saying he just told you in an interview, oh, well, that gives us the best chance to win. No, it gives you a better chance to win or plan your players and then giving them the proper amount of rest. And I agree with Tom Haberstraw. Uh, kudos to you on this article uh, right here about overplaying his bigs. Now, let's see if he plays Anthony Davis for the next 30-odd games at 40 minutes a game and see where that takes him. That kind of logic, well, you, 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 they, you're going to just tank you. You're going to drain. You're going to destroy the team. You can't ride Anthony Davis for 40 minutes a game. Some games, yes, but not – all games like he's been playing all these ridiculous amount of minutes. Now he has to pick up the slack for people that's not there. Anyway, let's move on to the next article because I can stay on that one for a full show. I tell you that much. Anyway, the Pelicans are looking to try, trying to make a deal. What kind of deals are what's out there right now? According to a lot of the rumors that's out there, we hear stuff uh, from Michael Beasley. We hear stuff from Derek Favors, who Beasley is a backup small forward slash power forward big for the uh, for the uh, Knicks who are, who's doing pretty good to him averaging about 14 15 points a game his size can contribute he can come in and help I don't know if that makes you a legitimate uh, uh, 
guy, you know, in any way. Then there's Maritovich, which is a lot of people's favorite, the Chicago small forward power, for, uh, power forward guy that can actually operate as a stretch big who got a, who can shoot the, the ball pretty well. But they got other teams with better movable parts that uh, wouldn't – that other teams could get him at a better deal than what we can offer. What's really killing us for making any deals, whether it's for people like Larry Nance, uh, uh, people like uh, uh, what else? Uh, what other trades are they happen out there? It's a bunch of different scenarios out there. Even Foreign A, who's another scorer, who you have to match his contracts, big contracts, Rodney Hood, people like that. Um, Pelicans are really in a crazy situation when it comes down to that those those cap situation to be quite honest with you because they don't have the money to actually do what needs to be done to uh, address the needs so it's going to be interesting we just have to keep an eye on what Dale Dimps is going to do because to be quite honest with you that guy has his he got he has his work really worked out for him to try to see if he can finesse a deal with, with the with the personnel and the contracts we have boy I mean we're going to have to see what he can do with Dale dealer. Dale can do about that. Let's preview the Sacramento Kings. we got a few minutes left to go uh, before we preview the Kings. The Kings, of course, Pelicans averaging about 111 points a game, 110.7 uh, points, uh, opposition points, 48% from the field, 43% rebounding. I mean, excuse me, 43 rebounds a game, 26 assists, five blocks, seven steals. And they lost their, their streak got broken with that loss in their seven and three the last ten contests. Of course, you're looking at Sacramento coming here, averaging 90, 98 points a game, giving up 106, 45 percent from the field, 40 rebounds a game, 20 assists a game, four blocks a game, eight steals a game. Coming off uh, a loss to the San Antonio Spurs, and they're two and eight in the last contest. They are definitely struggling. Uh, to make any things happen. And, uh, obviously, they are a team at 15 and 34, 8 and 20 away. This should be just what the Pelicans need to get going. They should be able to beat, and I, I say that they'll beat the Sacramento Kings and and kind of stabilize themselves moving forward before they start their road trip. So I'm going to give Swing that uh, prediction toward the Pelicans so they'll make a comeback win against a far less superior, uh, a, a far less team that's better than them this team is a bottom three worst team in the league and they should be able to capitalize off of that anyway that's the show thank you for listening to the pelican post game report tonight please by all means go and donate at www.patreon.com slash the pro media network and uh, of course support our sponsors at the posh lifestyle.com remember that's life spell with a y i'm big q thank you for listening peace Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. 
With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. <laughs> 